How do we do that? All right. so, there we go. Whenever I hear that, you know, I always think of there was a keynote speech. Do you remember this one, Don? It was at a OSSNA by the guy who's in um, Gordon Love Hewitt. What is his name? And yeah, it was, yeah. It's a. It was a a site that he was run that was called Hit Record. So it was like a collaborative site. So anyway. Yeah. I thought that was an interesting keynote. I don't remember a lot of it now, but I remember at the time, I, I was impressed that it felt like he had done his homework on open source. Unlike yeah, I, I agree. I thought it was one of the better keynotes that I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Hi, Liz. Hi, everyone. Hi, you got um, all right, well, I will share my screen in just a second. And hold on, sorry. All right. Well, welcome everybody to the Chaos Community Metrics Model meeting, uh, December 5th for all, I think. <laughs> Never, never quite know with this. We have a, this is by far our most globally spread uh, community meeting with representation <laughs> in Europe, <laughs> the US <laughs> and China. So welcome everybody. Um, minutes are in the chat. If somebody could continue to drop those in as new people join. I know Elizabeth is going to be here very shortly. Um, so anyway, it's great to have you here. Uh, I do want to just point out, this is our last meeting for the year of 2023, we'll meet, I think it's again on January 16th, just the way the schedule works. And we will have a meeting and then I'm kind of guessing, just looking roughly at the schedule there, this is gonna bump into FOSDEM, like the one, two weeks later. Yeah, yep, it will. Yeah. 14 so, plus, yeah, 30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be close. So we'll just have to kind of keep our eyes on that uh, as well when we meet up in, on the 16th. Okay. Um, so I think we'll go ahead and get into the goals. We have a few things today. So we'd like to, Yuhui put together kind of a list of goals for 2024. So Yuhui, thanks for doing that. And we'll get through that uh, here in just a second. Um, we do have a few metric model candidates. Um, Emilio from GitLab is going to be joining us kind of halfway through the meeting. And he has one that is of particular interest to him with respect to how GitLab, I believe, understands contributors. So Emilio will talk about that, um, which might be really interesting to uh, Yuhui with your connections with folks at Giddy, just kind of looking at how GitLab is thinking about uh, contributions from their own platform mm -hmm. perspective. Uh, and then lastly, you know, next week mm -hmm. is the Open Euler uh, conference meetup. I'm not quite sure what it is called, uh, but Big conference summit. <laughs> summit. Okay. I was close. <laughs> so the open Euler summit, uh, to which Daniel and Sean are going, and probably we should talk a little bit about that. And I think there is some connection with that, um, summit next week with some of our goals for 2024. Um, so Yuhui, do you want to, do you want me to talk through these or do you want to kind of introduce some of these, uh, goals? Cause you had taken some time to put these together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, I I read these proposals and uh, post it to 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 Shen, to to Matt, Dawn, to Daniel, to to collection the response about these goals because, uh, uh, on last last month, uh, or, or October's, uh, Dawn had just the lead to set up the uh chaos goal next year. So I think uh, we invite her to create our own. Uh, working groups go for next year so i read i prepare a, a proposal for this so uh, simply i prepare three uh actually uh third one is uh it's coming from matt's comments uh i remember several days ago last month maybe and um, so maybe we can go to the first one and uh, it's related to to set up a community health uh, evaluation framework uh, centered around the open source Linux distribution community. So it's uh, the background is that uh, we, uh, we when we met in uh, Bearbo, we talked about to set up this uh, uh, to provide uh, uh, chaos inside report for OpenRuler. 
as an open open source distributions community uh, as a complex uh, open source community. So, uh, I think we could put it as a as a one of the main work of of this working group. So, I think this framework uh, should uh, uh, compose of two components. I mean the uh, one is a theoretical framework, and another one is engineering solutions. So the first one is um, it's a mainly based on the current chaos metrics and metrics models. And if needed, we can create some additional uh, new metrics models. But I think this work could be collaborate with uh, with our common working group. Uh, uh, I think this group uh, currently currently mainly focus on the uh, creation of the new metrics and metrics models and uh, uh, that has uh, done a really good job. And second thing is that we cannot stop at just the theoretical framework. We should continue with uh, uh, the deployment, deployable uh, solutions, I mean the engineering solutions. Uh, this could be joined provided by, by Green Lab and Augur and OSS Compass. I think uh, the current uh, two, two tools provide the chaos and also the Compass, we could work in together to provide the, the, the complete solution for that. And uh, second, uh, third, that the open ruler community could uh, serve as a research subject, providing the necessary real world cases and data for building our framework. And uh, of course, uh, feedback to validation and uh, what about the achievement? So I plan that uh, like uh, six to eight months of work, uh, our community will deliver two main outputs. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, an uh, evaluation system for open source Linux distribution communities and then uh, in deep inside a report of open ruler based on our framework. And uh, the benefits so far, I can I can think of it that um, as a complex software system, uh, the distribution community could encompass many scenarios that can be reused in many other domains. So, I think that could be a a, a really good uh, application examples for for chaos. So, as far as we know, that uh, our community is short of such case so far, and also, um. It's also uh, give open rules subjectivity to exam practical issues and also demonstrate value of its community health. Because when we talk to the chairman of the community, uh, he very uh, aggressively to, to admit that the, their community do have some problem and uh, they don't want to hide them. Just uh, let uh, chaos help them to find, find them out and uh, help them to improve that. So. I think they are really happy to see us to find some issues to help them to improve that and also to show the real values of such uh, complex uh, uh, open source community. So that's the first proposals and the Please, main uh, focus. Yeah, yeah. I, was, were you, I was just gonna say, if we could stop there and get some feedback from folks yep. on this, that would be really helpful. Like listening to you, we uh, walk through these kind of the different framework solution partnership with the community achievement and benefits, you know, what were, what were your thoughts as you were hearing this? I mean, I think, I think that all sounds uh, reasonable. I think the only, the only thing we might want to make more clear is um, if, if that's a goal of this working group, how do the metrics models um, fit into this goal? Um, just to make sure that it's it's clear. And I I do think that they do because I think that this is a real, this could be a real test of some of the metrics models um, because we are uh, applying them to a community that's very different than what they were intended for. So I think it might allow us to identify maybe some some gaps or some some things that we need to change as part of the metrics models. Because um, I know, you know, metrics models are mentioned in sort of the, the theoretical framework, but as you continue reading, it's not as it's not as clear how the metrics models play into it. And if that's a goal of this working group, I think we need to be really clear about how the metrics models are a part of this this goal. 
-hmm. But otherwise, I, th I think it's really good. I think it's really, I think it'll be really interesting to dig into open, open oiler and really learn more, learn more about how we can apply the metrics to, to a project like this. It's done. Uh, following up on what, yeah, yeah. Following up on what Don said, I I think the word the report the word report that Yahoo is using is a bridge to taking a, another look at the metrics models and refining them so that more and more of the assets that would go into a report can be generated automatically in the form of metrics models. Because I think uh, Don. Don, you've done some reports that are a little that are a bit more focused or custom to a context. And I think by doing that in the way that Yahui is describing, we can use that what we learn to reinform mm -hmm. the what metrics models exist. Yeah, for sure. I think we'll definitely find that there are other metrics models that we need to develop in order to um, analyze this, this community for sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> question here um would be um so when when i was discussing this with yahoo in parallel um so the thoughts i had were is this that we are trying to uh feed the existing metrics models into the analysis of, of open euler so basically saying somehow hey we have these metrics models uh collaboration da, 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 and then um because we have this, then we are applying them to open Euler. And then what we are saying is, okay, based on these metrics models, these are the results. But if we if we think about how operating systems work or complex systems or, or whatever we want to call them, the thing is, first, probably we need to have a definition in place of, okay, this is an operating system, this is how this works. Uh, just an example of something that is not covered in the current metrics models, and then this is what you suggested, Don, maybe we discover others. Um, we say that the key parts here are this, 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 and this, and then maybe we are missing the point right now of the uh, package management system. That might be something definitely useful to have a healthy operating system that you can update and upgrade. Blah, blah, blah. So my question is, instead of going to what we have and fit it into Open Euler, Maybe we need to start as suggested at the beginning, like okay, we need to do some theoretical discussion or framework on this is an operating system. This I mean this is this is knowledge that already exists. It's about gathering that knowledge and making sense in chaos. And then it happens that we have all of these metrics models, and then three of them apply, maybe. Um, but not the others. So it's about creating the framework. And then having the discussion of if what we already have fit into this, which is different from fitting what we have, forcing kind of into open Euler analysis because we have it. No, absolutely. I, I agree with you. Um, I think I think we talked about that earlier, earlier in the process that we we do we do need to think of this differently than what we think of as as projects. And some of the metrics models will apply and some of them don't. Um, absolutely. And so, yeah, I absolutely agree that we need to do some of that theoretical work up front to see, to see which metrics models apply, which ones we should start with. And then I think some of that theoretical work will also help us identify where some of the gaps are. Some things that we probably need to measure about um, this type of community that we just don't even have models for. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that's, that's a great place to start. Absolutely. Yeah, um, and then the other thought that came to my mind, but that was mainly wording, is that in the uh, achievement, we say that after six to eight months of work, the chaos community will deliver. I mean, we are a community, so I don't know if all of the people here in this call can commit that we are delivering something in six months. So I would use just in the, instead of will, maybe boot. So it's like, okay. Aim idea. to. Yeah. <laughs> like this because that's all yeah <clears throat> i remember when i talked early to to dawn and and might i i said maybe early this year but after i i i write this draft i thought maybe early this year what does that mean three months it's not that enough maybe so i put the six to eight months here to to make sure us have 
enough time to think about it, especially when we when we're talking about we have to thinking how to set up such theoretical framework and and validate our current metrics model if it works or not. I think what was just added there, the blog post and conference presentations, I think that makes that sentence really, really confusing. I'm not sure if you, who he added that or somebody else. I did. So okay. not because it, then it, it's not sure whether the two outcomes are the blog sure. post and the conference presentations. Sure. Yep. Yeah. I mean? yeah. yeah. can fix that. So the idea was is that even within six to eight months, it's not necessarily the delivery of something like what LF research does. You know how they have like a PDF that kind of puts closure to a particular study. Um, mm -hmm. But I think maybe in that time frame we could start thinking about like a conference presentation would be here's where we're at, here's where mm -hmm. we're going. We're not done, but it could be really how we start thinking about our first outcomes of this process that it's probably not completed in six to eight months, but it's something we could start yeah. putting there for folks. No, I agree. I want to reword that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Because I suspect this won't be done in six months. This this could be, I think this could be a great way to experiment in other ways of working together, like, okay, we would like to deliver something meaningful, you know, isolated mm -hmm. piece of knowledge in this amount of time. What is what we can produce? And maybe, I, yeah, go ahead, Sean. 100%. If we have a target and a goal, we will get something done. Maybe. Yeah, I think if we're talking about the, we set up the theoretical framework first, I think this framework should be uh, theoretical things. We have different layers. Maybe when we uh, achieve the agreement on the first layer, and we can start work on the on the deployment things, how to how to make it deployable and and uh, and make the engineering solution uh, uh, in progress in parallel. Okay, this is great. Um, thank you. Are there any other comments, Daniel? Did you have another comment at all? Are you good? Oh. Let me review the comments I have before. Just okay, be and this is just on the first. I'm only talking yeah. about this first thing. <clears throat> well, maybe in the interest of time as well, Daniel, if you have other comments, maybe just type them in to the, yes, to the document. Do. And Yuhui, do you want to move on to your second? second? Sure. Uh, because in, in our uh, chaos community goals, we set up uh, a one goal that we, we, we are going to uh, start or process of st standardized or matrix model as a, as a, a, a SO standards with things. Think, I think uh, our community, uh, our working group could uh, could uh, initialize this work uh, from this group people. And, um, but I think our final goal, of course, to make this standard uh, achieved uh, to to be ready as a, as a real SO standards, this is our final goal. But I, when I was talking with uh, with uh, Daniel, with Dawn, with Shen, that, uh, but in the progress, we want to involve more people to join with us, working together. So, which means we have to make our uh, uh, our current working group more diverse. So, so to solve this problem, because the current uh, meeting schedule is kind of not that friendly to, to American peoples, uh, to, to Euro European peoples. So I, I suggest to adjust our meeting schedule to more convenient to, to, to those countries' peoples. So this is two propo proposals. First proposal is coming from Might, and the second proposal is coming from Dawn, because the first proposal is kind of conflict with the current Dawn's schedule uh, of the of her uh, CNCF meeting. So she proposed uh, the second one. So uh, we can make some decisions on these things. So is, are you suggesting a meeting in addition to this one, Yahui, or to reschedule this meeting? Just so I'm clear. Yeah, we, we, we can reschedule this meeting to make it okay. more friendly to other people. Yep, all right. I just want to make sure I understood the question. Yep. Either of those cadences do work for me for what that's worth. Okay. 
Okay. Um, well, there's kind of two things here, I suppose. One is the ISO standards. So that's in in process. So we have started discussions with the LF. Um, somebody put together a board. That's just an empty board, but um, it's a placeholder that can be filled in because I think a lot of the steps are regimented. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just haven't, I haven't filled in the blanks yet. Okay. But others yeah. can fill in blanks too. But when, when I looked at the materials the LF shared, it looks like a pretty linear process that we need to go through with pretty clear deliverable gates. So easy to, easy to make a list. So are people, when people hear about ISO standards, are you, are your thoughts that all of them would become ISO standards? Do we, is that the goal? That are 80 some odd metrics and, you know, 15 metrics models all become ISO standards? Is it that, you know, these are the select ones that were, were involved in the, say, the open oiler? You know, like we have the ones that are kind of used more regularly. What are people's thoughts on that? I personally think we should start with a few of the metrics models and and see see how the process works, see if this if we think that this is valuable. I think until we until we get through a few, um, I, I don't know that we really know how valuable this is going to be. I mean, we might find out that it takes months and months and months to do a single one, in which case maybe that's not the best use of our time to pursue this. I think until we do a couple, I don't think we I don't think we have a good feel. Okay. Hundred percent agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, I was just going to say it might it might be easy to pick a metric that is really straightforward, like number of contributors or you know number of pull requests. Something that it, like would be simple. I feel like to push through. I feel like our metrics models are complicated and it might complicate the process a little that's just my feeling i don't know much about the process but it seems like simpler would be more chance for success and a smoother path just my two yeah, cents i i agree i thought that during the discussions that there was a reason that we were focused we were going to focus on the metrics models instead of the metrics something to do with the way the iso standard process works maybe i'm misremembering I don't remember that. Okay. I, I do remember the discussion centering on metrics models. I don't remember why. I I do, they because they're structured a little bit differently, metrics and metrics models will probably have to account for that as part of the ISO standardization process. Mm. Okay. Do we yeah, have any? I thought well, maybe it had something to do with um because the ISO, the ISO standards are basically processes, right? So they're like a structured, a structured process. But ours is not gonna be that. There is a standard for documents, which is made okay. that made it better for us. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so like what um open chain has done was more complex because it yeah. was processes within the supply chain. Okay. And apparently ours is much easier because we don't, we're not standardizing a process. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. do, do you know if, um, what if specifically were, what we are kind of, so we, we can standardize processes. We are standardizing like, uh, Pieces of knowledge, a definition, a definition. Okay. Yep, that's the way I understood it. Okay. Thank you. I think it's easier because um, apparently patent trolling doesn't really exist on standardizing definitions, but it exists on standardizing processes. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, I guess another question that I have also with the ISO stuff is if we do a metric model, do we also have to standardize all of the the connecting metrics? That was kind of my feeling too. 
like that would imply that we would have to not only do all of the included metrics, but then the actual model itself. So that might be an extra layer of mm. stuff. The, what would be awesome is if we could just do the metric model and get a twofer on the included metrics, like if it was <laughs> structurable that way. I would, I, I, I'll hope, <laughs> I'll ask you. A um, boy I, can dream. I will say this too. <laughs> the intention is, is that we do have funding to pay somebody externally to help with getting these into ISO standard format. Like apparently there's just some technical work that needs to technical writing work that needs to be done. And my intention is to <laughs> ship that out <laughs> and not necessarily do it here. And then we could fine tune it uh, here in, in this group. Unless somebody has a strange compulsion to want to do that. <laughs> So, and then I'm guessing too, that if we do get these into ISO standards, we'll just have to update all of our current markdown files to represent the metrics models in these ISO standards. Shouldn't be too hard. Okay, um, what about meeting times? Yeah, I moved, sorry, I moved oh, that okay. out of the discussion about the goals because it seemed <laughs> completely separate. So maybe we finish the goals and then come back to the meeting time. Fair enough, okay. Um, Yuhui, do you want to talk about this third goal? Yeah, actually, this is the comment from, from you, uh, and I, I think we can uh, uh, make this as part of our working group's work. So we can see all the metrics model before publishing. And uh, we are talking a little bit here in our working group and uh, just to provide some daily work and, and for review and and, and something uh, from formulations such such things I think. for sure yep this is just i think this is just in the in the sense of if a metric model is developed in common making sure it's not just published immediately out of common that it comes here first yeah an external review or whatever an additional review. yeah big big plus one to that i mean i think we need to continue to do the work that we've done here in the metrics model working group which is yeah. review the metrics models and discuss them and i think that that work needs to continue to happen in this group yep mm -hmm. um it does it's funny because it does i'm reflecting on some of the work don that you have been doing about discussions on prs and then the absence of that like like when you're doing <laughs> community evaluate when well, you're like this may be okay because there may be discussions that are occurring outside of the PR so I I wonder you know is that okay that we would just have these discussions in zoom you know what I mean because then a PR would just look like a a drop of an, a markdown file and probably an instant merge based on <laughs> so I don't, don't know how you want to approach that yeah I feel like we have the right people in this meeting to at least discuss them I mean if 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 we have more of the if we can have more of the discussion in, in Slack or someplace else, then maybe we need to have less of the discussion in the meeting itself, okay. which might save us some time to do other things. But um, but I feel like maybe the approval process, like the you know, the, the final review, I guess, not not approval process, but like the final review could be here. Yeah, uh, we we sure we could certainly use the built-in features of GitHub more to our advantage. Mm -hmm. well, we we could just we could um as oops as part of the as part of the pr just point to this discussion like point to the minutes here mm -hmm. yeah i mean part of part of what makes it hard to use the regular pr process is that a lot of the discussion happens in google docs yeah uh, and some you know some of it happens as discussions and meetings but it all it all kind of gets filtered into the doc and then the doc gets moved into a PR, at which point the discussion should be Agreed. over. Yep. Um, so that that's what makes this this hard. I mean, it, it, the discussion's a lot easier. The collaboration is a lot easier um, because of the nature of this work to do it in the Google Docs. Okay. So maybe if we just point to, point to, point to this document is where this was happening. And if somebody really wants to track down the history, we could just do it there. Okay. All right, great. Um, no problem. Moving right along. Uh, 
Um, last thing is moving this time, well, meeting time proposal. So Don, you had mentioned, or Yehui, you had mentioned that this was a time that maybe conflicts with Don. And yeah, there's a CNCF TOC meeting that I have to attend as a tag chair. Um, okay. That's 10 a.m. Central time. Okay. I'm guessing okay. Thursday at 9 or 10 Central has no chaos conflicts without looking. It didn't seem to. I think we just need to make sure. I think maybe one of the weeks it would conflict with something. So I think we just need to be careful about which week we put it on. Okay. So just I think maybe the that. science meeting, though. I think the one that wasn't on the calendar might be oh. at that time. Okay. Maybe. Somebody, somebody take a look really fast. Nine or ten. Either are fine for me. I'll be honest with you. And if this seems to work, maybe we could. 9 a.m. is 7 a.m. West Coast. U.S. West Coast. You, I, I, mm -hmm. I look at these times and I worry about you. That's like, quite fun. Time That's the this? two weeks. <laughs> Every <laughs> other week. It's fun. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, then. Uh, there, is a, there is a conflict on at 9 a.m. Yeah. All the every, time. Every week or just every yeah, other week? Every other week. So we could do the off week. Yeah. Or 10 a.m. Is there a conflict at 10? There is no conflict at 10 that I can see. That might be better because that would be better for the West Coast for sure. Because it would okay, be eight instead of seven. Um, that is actually somebody, I think Sean just put in there, the Chaos Africa schedule will change. So that might. Um, but we can deal with that in spring, I guess. But that's too. that's an argument for putting it at 10. Because yeah. that, that meeting yeah. will flip into the 9 a.m. slot. Yes. Okay. Um, so why, why don't we just start this one in 2024? Like, let's just go ahead and start this when we come back. Why so, wait yeah. a year? But, <laughs> <laughs> so what what date would that be? What is our first Thursday? It what's the, the 18th? Like, what's the 18th. Okay. Or the eleventh, eighteenth or eleventh, however you wanna let's just yeah. start on the eighteenth of okay. Jan. So, Elizabeth, could you update that? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks. All right. So we are um, moving into new and existing metrics models as candidates. And Emilio from GitLab has joined us. Emilio, hi. Welcome to our meeting. Good morning. Hey, so I don't know where you are right now. I'm I'm in Seattle. It's early morning. Okay. Well, that is very early morning. Okay. <laughs> so Emilio, do you want to take just a minute and talk a little bit about what you were thinking with respect to metrics and metrics models that we had talked yeah. about in Raleigh? Hey, first of all, thanks very much for giving me the time. Nice meeting you all. Um, I'm I'm Emilio. I'm the vice president of developer relations at GitLab. And uh, one of the challenges that we keep facing, both in our product and when we talk to customers, as always, uh, um, is about metrics. Metrics as they relate to developer productivity, uh, which is a challenge. Why? Because everyone is looking at this from different angles, but there's no consensus on how we can measure and think about developer productivity. There's been like, different discussions, McKinsey published uh, an analysis about a month, a month and a half ago that got you know, a significant pushback from most of the community. I, in a prior life, I was at Google. Google did a ton of internal research on the federal productivity and uh, they found out that some of the most relevant aspects had nothing to do with uh, with the tools or all the technical components of the developer work. They were about, you know, um, employee well-being, team support, project, etc. There was also a um, 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 framework published about a year and a half ago called Scale that it takes into consideration some of those elements. But again, the challenge that we face, and of course, Google developed, you know, for DevOps, Dora, you know, and Dora metrics that we have included in GitLab and most of our customers are using. But that, that, only, that only gives 
people, you know, a view on productivity that is not applicable to the entire software development life cycle. And also they don't factor in other, other non-quantitative elements, like I said before. I mean, job satisfaction, project, peer support, et cetera. So I, I was um, speaking with Matt, you know, when we met at, you know, the Open Source Summit in, in Bilbao, and, and basically I, I challenged him in terms of saying, hey, chaos is basically within the, the Linux Foundation. If there is an entity, a team who can help solve that problem, it's, it's you. So how can we work together? In order yeah. to think about this and put together, well, I don't think we're going to solve it. It's more about building like some kind of framework that will help people like product companies like, like GitLab, but also our customers to think about developer productivity in a more consistent way, right? Because the challenge that I, that I see today is that, hey, someone comes up and says, hey, we've been able to increase developer productivity by 50%. And, uh, you know, executives love that. Because the, the first thing they, they think is that, oh, if you are able to increase developer productivity by 50%, then that means that I can get rid of 50% of my developers. And it's like, yeah, no, it doesn't work that way. Right? Why? Because that, the way you think about the, it's semantics. Developer productivity, it is not just about, I don't know, the number of the line, number of lines of code, the number of bugs you fix. I mean, there are all the elements that you need to factor in to think holistically about developer productivity. So we have been challenged by Emilio to, <laughs> to <laughs> and we accept the challenge. Um, well, I'm kind of curious what people's initial thoughts are with respect to thinking about developer productivity. I'm curious, Don, if you had kind of come across this in your work at VMware or Pivotal. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, developer productivity is really, really hard to measure in a way that's um, sort of defensible when you start talking to people. Um, so I've, I've tended to avoid it. It just wasn't, it wasn't a high enough priority to go through the, the process of, of trying, trying to measure it. Um, so to be honest, I don't have a lot of experience measuring developer productivity. Can you talk a little bit on about like maybe where are you did you try to start in ways that it, it felt like it kind of fell apart? Um, no, I don't I don't know that I ever made a real effort to to try to measure developer productivity. It's certainly something I thought about a few times. Um, but I think the the challenge that you run into with developer productivity is that developers tend to be productive in very different ways, depending on what they're working on, what they're doing, whether they're a JavaScript developer or a you know C++ developer. Um, I, I always... don't get me wrong. I think it's I think it's worth looking at. And I think that we might be able to put some some models together to do this. And I know there's certainly loads of academic research on on this this topic. Um, I think it's I think it's worth doing. I've just personally never done it because it's just never been it's never been a, a high priority for me as, as someone working in open source. I think um, engineering teams, it's probably been like a, a higher priority. It's just not, never on the open source team have we worried too much about developer productivity. Uh, thank you, Don. Daniel, yeah. you have a comment? Sean, and here you have a comment too, but Daniel had his hand up. Oh, so Sean, go ahead. It's okay. No, you go ahead, Daniel. Matt is right. You had your hand up. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, so coming from a more uh, well, coming from a, an academic background, but uh, Don, you've done a PhD as well. Um, so we've been trying to measure perhaps not productivity, but effort from a more, from a more open source way of thinking. So basically, how much effort are people putting into open source projects? Um, the based on experience uh, in Viterbi is that productivity means different things for different people, even at different levels in the organization. So uh, what we try, what we've tried to build for some of our customers in Viterbi is, can you have this definition of productivity? This is the experience we have from other customers. So then 
this is kind of the final definition of productivity that is useful for you at this stage. So for instance, at the very beginning, if you are building a product, you need to go certainly faster than when you are in a more mature stage, then probably you need to produce code in a different way or the priorities are, are different ones. And if we think about a large corporation, they will have this balance between um, you know, a quality and deadlines and budget so then what does it mean productivity for them to have things done on time or to have things done with a higher quality, even if they are consistently delayed? So basically don't know. Uh, so what, what we've seen that is useful, at least as a very first step, is to have a certain definition of productivity, whatever it is, and then have all of the teams, all of the projects in one place. And basically you will have like a distribution of the data. And then at some point, most of your teams, because we don't like to work at the, at the developer level, most of your teams or squads um, will be around certain median, well, average probably, you know, around a certain, but that you will have outliers. So what does it mean, those outliers? Basically is, is where, where the key information is. For those that are really, really slow, for a certain definition of productivity, and for those that are really, really fast, for another definition of productivity. And then it's about learning from them what is making them uh, being those outliers. And then if that makes sense, because then it's where it's learning from them is where you will be able to move that average of developers or teams into one direction or the, or the other. This is how we've been using uh, that definition. But do we have a proper definition of productivity? That depends on each customer, I would say. Sean, all yours. I, I I don't think I have anything to add to that, Daniel. I, I think so what you've described is possibly the only path I can think of for measuring developer productivity without making it a shooting contest. Um, if if you look at groups and look for outliers, that just has a, a ton of face validity where I think you could get developers to be kind of okay with it if it's handled discreetly. Um, and I think if the outliers... I don't know what your experience is, but I, I su suspect that the outliers are groups that have really clear goals and they outlie at the top or groups that are saddled with some very difficult to manage legacy software that are kind of pinned in at the bottom. And that's, it's more situational than individual or group performance when you get to those outliers. So I think you identify real organizational debt or opportunity the way that you described it. I just think it's, I think, that makes sense to me. Emilio, do you have reaction to this at all? Yeah, I, 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 I think that we're all on the same page. You know, uh, well, number one, Don, to your point before, it is, it is difficult to measure. Uh, Daniel, yeah, I, I think it, like always, yeah, it depends. But the challenge is that, and, and eventually my, my goal with this exercise is to have uh, we won't we will not be able to solve this, but at least have some sort of framework that will help people think about developer productivity. Maybe the framework has, you know, a time component based on what you said, Daniel. It depends on where you are or the product that you are developing, you know, or the team you are part of. And maybe there's different axes that we need to, you know, to think about. But I don't think there's been a, a like a, a consistent effort about defining those axes. And once we have them, you know, provide people with some examples, so some metrics that they can think of, you know, to, to try to measure productivity. And maybe it's not about metrics. Maybe the exercise is about it like, hey, you know what? Forget about measuring it. What you have to do is that basically define several clusters within your org, look at productivity on each of those clusters. But even if we ask our customers to do that, the next question is going to be, okay, how, how do, what are the key metrics that I need to analyze within those clusters? So I can compare those, you know, and I can compare apples with apples. And I, and I think that, hey, well, it depends on every customer. Uh, I think, yeah, it does, but having a framework that will help us explain our customers how they should think about productivity is, is, is worth, you know, spending time on. Absolutely, yes. 
So my my fear would be that this is what we release, and then yeah, this is the productivity metric that we should be measuring because this is what chaos says. Eesh. No, yeah. because it's it's not about yeah. This is like There's... the lot of the the lot of the rings. You know, one ring to rule them all. No, that's not the plan, right? That's why I keep insisting on the idea of more like a, more. It's more a framework than just a set of numbers. Danny, to your point, because everyone, executives love that. Give me a number. I don't even need to believe in the number. Just give me a number. I just want to see that going up and to the right. That's not the, the intent here is that, hey, there is no number that is going to solve this equation. I mean, there will be different, you know, there will be different numbers and there will be even some, some subjectivity to them that you need to factor in. Yeah, and I think whatever we might come up with, I think we need to be careful to do it in a way that's going to discourage managers weaponizing it against um, the poor developers that are not productive in the way that they're measuring it. Yeah, no, I, and I've seen that happening many, many times. I oh, mean, yeah. not, not just about productivity, in, across every single company, they use a number of a model and then they weaponize it. Or oh, they game it. The managers system. weaponize it. The developers game it. That's the game trend. It. It's like, that's over. right. Like I saw that at Google, Microsoft, Amazon. Is that, oh, what is the goal? The goal is about X. Okay, I'll give you X. Why? Because I know that next quarter you're going to ask me to reduce X by 10%. So I better make X as big as possible this quarter. So Sean, do you have a, we're approaching the end of time. So if you have a comment. My my quick comment is for a long time, chaos has held to an ethic of helping look at project health. And we've kind of avoided quite deliberately, at least originally, individual developer metrics because of this weaponization problem. So I think that's just something to take and think about over the break. Fair. Thank you. And it this conversation, it does, it really makes me think of Gary's approach towards the viability metrics models. So these are several metrics models that came out. They're definitely not meant to be like, this is how you identify a viable project. <laughs> and we guarantee it's long-term viability. This is how you think about projects in your supply chain um, for the future. And it's not perfect. So I, I think maybe we could follow this approach as well, that we have metrics models, but they include a narrative around them, Daniel, to kind of offset your concerns. But this is This is productivity. Uh, full stop. So great. Um, Emilio, thank you for bringing that up. This is, I think, something we can definitely take a look at uh, moving forward in 2024. So thank you for it. joining us so early in yes. your day in Seattle. Yes. We, no, we appreciate thank you. I think, thank, we, we need to bring power. And I think this yeah. is the right forum for this. So thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sean. I was just going to uh, tell Emilio to enjoy his atmospheric river. <laughs> The rain. It's raining. Yeah, it's raining quite yeah. a lot. Um, all right. So Sean and Daniel, I don't know if this is if you know this is what you're doing, but this is what yeah, we know. <laughs> all right. <laughs> when you uh arrive in Beijing. So um definitely enjoy your journey. Is this at all streamed, Yahui? Any part of the summit? Yeah, yeah. As far as no, this is all we we how we planned out here okay okay um well that'll be fun so enjoy yourself you two we, we'll look for a report when you come back for sure so there will be cool. one <laughs> yeah all right. all right thank you for joining everybody it's good to see you and we'll see you, in see you next year thank okay you. Thank, you. Right. thank you bye bye